gone for you in preparation uh, for the game? The week's gone real well. Um, I think our kids have been focused the whole entire time as a football team. Um, we came down here uh, and really just kind of been been to, uh, honing in on, on on what Oklahoma State's doing and, and just kind of getting our fundamentals and, and, and prep back and getting the things oiled back up uh, since it's been a little bit since we played. Mighty good. If you have questions, the mic holders will come around while we wait. Joe, throughout your career, what, what are some of the, the experiences um, that you think really sort of shaped who you are? Maybe some of the stops that kind of shaped your coaching philosophy, or has it been a blend of all the places you've been? And uh, it, it's been a blend of some of the places that I've been. Um, you know, I, I'd say coming back from high school and my high school coaches, and that was a big fundamentals for me. Um, you know, Coach Uspensky, Coach Mannion, uh, back in, in Miami. Um, Coach Ari, who's the head coach at, at uh, uh, Concordia River Forest, he was the first guy that I worked for at Lakeland College. Um, he was a big influence. Um, but probably recently, um, Phil Bennett, uh, Coach Wanstatt, uh, and Gary Darnell. Any questions? Kyle Fredrickson with the Oklahoma. A question for Jimmy. Uh, take me back to some of those first years in the program when the team is struggling. Uh, what gave you hope or made you confident that Coach McIntyre was the guy to, to really lead this turnaround that we've seen now in his fourth year? Um, he's always been pushing like the first few years that we were trying to build a foundation. Uh, coming back from the, those tough years that we had, we were really focusing on just building the program from the ground up. and. Uh, the seniors in years past were really, really emphasizing and doing that thing. And then uh, this year, we're just trying to build, build up from where they left off. Question? Joe, to follow up, the, the, the previous experiences you've had in, in bowl games, are, are you drawing anything from that as you've gone about preparing your defense for, for this week? Yeah, you know, the biggest thing when you get there is during the prep before you get to the bowl site. And I think the, 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 the amount of time that we spent in the practices that we had before that, that was really where you're coming in here. Coming into the bowl site, you know, because of all the activities and the schedule that, that we have as a, as a football team, you know, you want to you make sure you keep it short and precise and, and then just focus on the, on, the, on the little things and work things through there. But our, our major of our work was done before we even got here. Jenny and then Hey, Coach, Jenny Carlson with the Oklahoman. Sorry. It's not often you see uh, college quarterbacks that are in a program for sometimes three, maybe four. You guys got a, a guy who's been there a while, but so does Oklahoma State. What have you seen out of Rudolph and how maybe that longer-term experience has impacted what he does for them? Uh, <clears throat> he runs it. I mean, you, he, they, they go on how he goes. Um, you know, he's the... He's the uh, He's the guy that makes the engine go, in a sense. Um, you know, he puts them in the right plays. He makes very good decisions in there. He's very well coached. Um, you know, I, I think what he what he does is he, he sees it, makes his decisions, and and puts those guys in a in a very good position. You know, he doesn't make very many mistakes. You don't see very many mental mistakes come out of him. He doesn't make bad decisions. Question middle. This is for Tedrick. Uh, what challenges do you anticipate from the Oklahoma State passing offense, which is ranked 10th in the nation? I think just how big and how physical their receivers are. I think these are some of the best receivers we've faced all, all season long. It's kind of like a Pac-12 opponent just because of how much they pass, but they also have a great running game. But, um, you know, we got trust in our corners that they're going to play a great game. And, you know, as safeties, we just got to – try to help our corners out as much as we can. I just feel like because I, I just feel like these receivers are going to use their um, how big they are and they're big and they're fast at the same time so it should be a good challenge for us. Coach, uh, what did you see on film from Oklahoma State's true freshman running back and, and are you kind of impressed that he's been able to do that uh, as a true freshman? Well, I think I think both their running backs run hard, you know, and what they do a nice job of, he's got good vision and he's able to see some seams and some holes and then once he gets in there, he has a burst. And then and, and he's tough to bring down, you know, he breaks through some tackles. He's, his yards after or after carry is, is pretty good, after contact is pretty good. Um, you know, he, he runs low and he's going to be a challenge for us and our guys up front. Jordan, what, what did you guys take away from, from the game against Washington that, you know, they kind of came out, were able to kind of push their way down the field a lot, ran the ball really well. What, what did you guys 
kind of do as a defensive line, regrouping after that and set a focus for, for this game? Uh, you know, we broke down the film and we corrected our mistakes. And throughout these last couple of weeks of preparation, we really toned into our technique and fundamentals and um, just really focused on just coming back together and going out uh, on top of one last ride. Thank you, Jordan. Other questions? Back. Mark Johnson, Colorado Football Network. Cheeto, this is for you. You guys have been off for well, a little over three weeks, I guess, at this point in time. How do you guard against not being sharp, being that you haven't faced game action here for over three weeks? Well, I mean, in practice, it's pretty much a game every day. You know, we all here trying to get better and compete with the uh, scout team and our own offense, and that really helps us, you know, get the speed of the game. And, you know, finishing on balls and stuff like that is stuff that uh, Coach Tumpkin, Coach Clark, and Coach Mack emphasize every day. So we just try to get to the speed of the game in practice, and that usually helps us uh, during the game. Is it for Cheeto, uh, can you address how important it is for the seniors, speaking for all of you guys up there, to uh, finish this game, finish this season with a win? Oh, no, it's very important. I mean, from our freshman year, we've been told that that was our goal, is to go to a bowl game. And then this year, you know, we find, we realized that we were good enough to play in the Pac-12 championship, which is good and all. But, you know, from the first day here, I, f I feel like that was our first goal, was to go to a bowl game and to finish out uh, with those seniors at the time. And, you know, those seniors didn't get a chance to play in a bowl game. The next seniors didn't get a chance. The next seniors didn't get a chance. And now it's right here in front of us. So I feel like we plan for our own dreams, but also for theirs that uh, didn't get a chance. You know, we really want to finish out strong and make sure that we, uh, you know, s secure our legacy. For Jordan, this factor that has allowed your defensive line to create such good chemistry and play consistent all season long? Uh, the trust and the brotherhood that we formed throughout this off season, um, we're pretty close off the field so that correlates to what we do on the field and uh, we just want to, we want to be great. So we're all three seniors and um, we just play for our whole team. Jordan, can you talk a little bit about uh, your partners, Samson and Josh and their stories of bouncing back this year? <clears throat> yeah, both those guys, you know, they, they've faced adversity, but they didn't let that detour their, their ultimate goal of, of playing football. So, you know, I'm proud of those guys and what they've gone through and, how much they've overcame, and um, the amount of work that they put in this offseason is really, is really shown on the field of what they've done this year. Jimmy, uh, given your guys' history and having some losing seasons coming into this year, it would have been natural for you guys to have the goal of just going to a bowl game, but you guys shot higher than that. How important was that for you guys to set the bar higher than just going to a bowl game? Um, I mean, last year we realized that we could play with these teams that were blowing us out in years past, and so by, with that with that in mind, we we set our goal higher. Uh, we felt that we had the ability, we had the chance to win the Pac-12 South, and we did. Uh, we felt that we had the ability to win the championship, which didn't which didn't turn our way. But at the same time, by setting those high goals, you're not you're not trying to limit your team to just a small something small, something that can be achieved easily. And so by having these bigger goals, it really, it really allowed us to push harder and do things that a lot of people didn't expect us to do. Coach Duncan, after the uh, Pac-12 title game of the bus fall to Washington, uh, have you sensed in the last three weeks that, that this is a really hungry football team you've been coaching? Uh, definitely. I mean, you look at one of the things I sensed about our whole football team, and especially us on defense, is um, they, they are brotherhood. Um, they, they do a lot of things together. They, they clown around together. They work together. They get on each other together. Um, they're, they're probably one of the, in my 22 years, probably one of the tightest groups I've been around. Um, and, and when you have a successful football team, a lot of that comes together. They know each other. You watch them communicate on the field. You watch them how they talk to each other in the game situations. A lot of times they've been around each other. They know each other. They believe in each other. They trust each other. They'll fight for each other. And that's one of the biggest things that, that has um, showed our success this year. For Tedrick again. You had six career interceptions coming into your senior year, and you, surp you surpassed that with seven interceptions this season. What do you attribute your success this season to? 
my teammates really um I think my teammates always push me. Uh, I, I probably heard I'm probably one of the quietest guys on the team, but you know I look from everybody from afar. Cheeto, uh, Afalabi, who's my roommate, Akello. I look at all those guys and see how, how much they push each other during practice and during the film room and stuff like that. And if you go back and look at the interceptions I did get this year, it wasn't really me. All I did was catch them, and I dropped a lot. But uh, the D line got a lot of pressure. The linebackers was underneath routes, and you know because of our coaches, Coach Clark, Coach Tumpkin, and Coach Mack, how. How they even when Coach Level was here, how they stretched the film room, stretched the film room and stuff like that, and me being able to watch film, and my teammates helped me. Uh, example was the the two picks I got during Stanford. The one, the first one I caught, it was just because the D line got pressure and I just dove for it. And if you go back and watch the film on the second one, Cheeto told me to route right before the play. So it's just stuff like that that shows how close we are. So like the interceptions I did get is really because my teammates. Hey Jimmy. Uh can you talk a little bit about just how uh, the Colorado fans have reacted this year to what you guys have done? I heard that the ticket allotment's gone and more tickets were requested. I know this will probably be a lot of Oklahoma State fans just geographically being closer to Stillwater, but how did you guys see the fans react to this season and what are you expecting out of them this week? Um, one thing that Coach Mack has really shown us was just that the, uh, so the faith that the fans had. Um, that we have influenced a lot of people, um, just giving them the will and the drive to do things that they sit when they say they have hard times and just watching our team has brought light back into their, their lives. Um, that really touches you because it lets you know that what you're doing around isn't just on y'all. It's influenced the whole circle around you and, and people from afar uh, are also have their eyes on us and that's, and we're helping people who at first weren't even Colorado fans weren't even paying attention to us, but then they see that we can go from zero to zero to 100 really quickly and, and that really helps us, that really motivates us to just do harder and, and not let their good wills go to waste. Joe, Tedrick mentioned a little while ago that Oklahoma State's passing game is a little bit reminiscent of some of the Pac-12 offenses you guys have faced. And I'm wondering, their, their wide receiving group as, as a whole, and, and James Washington, Washington specifically, do, do they remind you of anybody you guys have played this year? Um, I, I think they're very similar to um, Washington. Um, you know, offensively, what they do, how they do it, how they execute. You know, the quarterback is the key. Uh, same thing with, with Washington's quarterback. Um, <clears throat> you know, us, us being able to control and stop the run is going to be key for us and then um, keeping them off their play action game. Hey, Tedrick, the, uh, the matchup between you guys, your defense and Oklahoma State's offense, I think a lot of people are saying it's one of the better matchups in the non- New Year's Day championship bowl games. Are you guys excited about seeing how this shakes out? I think we're just a competitive group, so we're excited to play every single game. Um, we take nothing for granted, but because how competitive we are, competitive we are, and how competitive I'm pretty sure this offense is, we're looking for it, looking forward to it, looking forward towards the challenge, and you know we just expect a great game because they're just not going to hand it to us. We got to go out there and compete like we've been doing all season, so it should be a fun game. Jordan, we just heard uh, Coach Tumpkin uh, compare Oklahoma State to Washington offensively. We hadn't seen many teams run against you guys up front like Washington did. Are you and Josh and, and Samson maybe got a little chip on your shoulder heading into a ball game after what went down that Pac-12 title game? Yeah, we're ready to come out and play physical. Um, we're going to play our techniques and do our job. And as a whole defense, we've been uh, just pounding our technique and uh, just dial into the scheme that Coach Tumpkin has prepared for us. So we're ready to go out there and uh, make up for what happened uh, the last game. Thank you. Coach, if uh, you and Ted will stay up here, we'll move the other guys around the, around the 